Ballers. This is your host, AJ Bramlett. Again, got my super producer with me, Mr. Ryan Wall. And man, what an exciting weekend for the Cats. Saw some great performances, man. Let's let's hop right in. Yeah, AJ, it was a great 25 point victory in their opening game um, in their Pac 12 play against Oregon State. Uh, it was an away game, and I just want to label this myself, the Benedict Matherin game. He was incredible. <laughs> 29 points, AJ, eight rebounds, uh, 11 for 18 shooting, and he did it all, passing, driving to the rim. The three-pointer looked great. Just break it down for me. I mean, that's the Ben Matherin that we all know, right? And, I mean, I would say probably his most complete game since he's been at U of A. I know he's had maybe a higher scoring point total game, but all around, even his defense, uh, the way he was facilitating for guys. And then just everything came within the flow of the offense. Like he wasn't forcing any shots. He was just taking good shots throughout the game. He was obviously being aggressive with his offense, which is what they need him to do. But I mean, the spectacular highlights that he had in that game, I mean, <laughs> you know, three of those three dunks, all three of them were like, hey man, those are NBA level dunks, NBA level athleticism. And to see that uh, and them to play so well on the road. And Oregon State's not a bad team. I know their record isn't very good right now, but when you watch the game, I mean, they, they have a lot of talent. They play hard. You know, they, they have some good scoring options on offense. And for them to go on, you know, first Pac-12 road game and get a 25-point victory, um, you know, it was very impressive, especially after not having a game and being off for so long because of the, you know, the Washington postponement. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was incredible. I thought it was his first game this season where he put all uh, phases of his game together, the defense. Yeah. Um, you know, getting to the rim, shooting, passing. I feel like everything he put together. Do you do you think, I mean, we're, we're big uh, Matherin guys, but do you think that he can, you know, continue this down the stretch here? Absolutely, because, I mean, he anytime that he steps on the court, he's going to have a physical advantage on almost anyone that he plays in, in the entire nation. And so when his confidence is high, you know, he's able to knock down that outside shot with consistency, can always get to the basket. I mean, we know he can get into the lane and finish and, and power through and, and finish strong at the basket. But when he's knocking down those, uh, those three-point shots, you know, effortlessly like he was the other night, and really searching for them and just feeling comfortable in the flow of the offense. There's no reason why he can't continue this because, you know, like we said, he wasn't, he wasn't hunting those, those points. They came to him within the flow of the offense. He took the shots that he was supposed to take. And, you know, if he's going to, he's been doing that all year. Just some of those shots haven't gone down and he's being a little bit more aggressive now that he's feeling good. And it's just fun to watch because he's an exciting player. He's one of the most, you know, exciting players of college basketball. Yeah. Three other players for the Wildcats in this uh, big win were in double digits. Um, did anyone else stand out to you and you think made an impact in this game? You know, I liked in this game, um, two guys, actually, actually, Pelo Larson, I thought, you know, played really well. Um, you know, I think he's coming along inch by inch and, um, you know, it's kind of taken him a little bit to get going this season, but I see him improving a lot, especially on the defensive end and even on offense. He's a very, he's a multi-tool guy, you know, on the offensive end and he can do a little bit of the dirty work. He's big, strong. Um, you know, I thought he played really well. I, I thought Justin Kyer had a really good game. I thought that he, um, you know, came in with more, a little bit more aggressive, you know, attitude on offense, which, which is nice to see. I think he's settling in more to the offensive role as well. And, uh, you know, I always love that guy. So I'm going to talk about it anytime that I can, but um, I think he played really, I thought both those guys, you know, coming off the bench played really well for them. Yeah. And yeah, they both played well. Pella Larson has really, to me, proved that he's more than just a three point shooter. People thought that he shot 46% from uh, deep last season at Utah. And then this year, people thought that's what he was going to do, but he's proved he's a good ball handler. He's a very good defender. You know, he's six seven, I believe, and he could just do a little bit of everything. Same thing with Kyra. Uh, is there any other person that, you know, made a mark to you? In this well, I mean, Christian, you know, Coloco has been playing really well. He's just continued on his streak of having really solid games and every single game that goes by and he continues to put on those performances and just continue to finish around the basket. You know, he had some, some great block shots the other night, like he's been doing every single game. Just his consistency is, is still standing out to me because it just proves the point that, hey, this is the guy that we have now. And he's one of the best bigs in the country. And he's going to play like this, you know, every single game. And he's proved it against, you know, big guys like Michigan, uh, you know, the, the All-American of Michigan. He's continued to prove it against lesser competition and now in Pac-12 play. So I think it's just a great sign for us. I'm happy for, for Christian. And, um, you know, he's just 
he's doing all the right things. He's not forcing anything. They get on the ball in good positions. They're looking for him when he's open and he's posted strong and he's finishing down there. And then he runs the court so well after every single, whether it's a block or a rebound or, or whatever, he runs the court, you know, so well that they're getting into him in, in positions where he can score and be effective offensively. So I think he's, he's continued to stand out. And there was no difference on, on Sunday. Yeah. And we're seven games in now, AJ, do you, you, you think it's, it's okay for us to label Christian Coloco as a, like a star, you know, cause a few games in we were, people were, we were high on them, but again, the competition wasn't, you know, too great, but you know, now we're seven games in Arizona. It's ranked 11th in the country. Is he the real deal? Absolutely. It's, I mean, he's checked the box. You know, he's, he's, we, like you said, at the beginning of the season, we were pleasantly surprised of his play. And then, you know, once I thought he got through the, the Wichita State game and then the Michigan game, that kind of cemented it. Then I wanted to see how he progressed after that because, you know, you can have a certain game where you dip down or don't have that kind of performance. But his effort and energy have been the same across the board every single time he steps on the court. And, you know, now with the more, you know, confidence that's been instilled in him offensively, like that was the piece that had to come along a little bit slowly. Now it's here. He always had it in there but now he's really searching for his offense he knows where he wants the ball he knows where he can be effective and his jump hook and his post game is just solid right now and they're the team is putting him in positions to be successful because he's working so hard and so absolutely he's a star in in college basketball right now and you know he'll continue to put up you know the numbers that he's done and, and help the team continue on this hot streak yeah although there's been a lot of good aj um some bad has still been present and that's the three point shooting. Yeah. They shot 28% from the three and they've struggled to get, you know, around that average 35% and above in every game, pretty much besides one of them. So do do you think that they can improve the three point shooting and that can help them, you know, get to that top five level in the country? I think that's the one thing that's going to have to improve if uh, we're looking at, you know, trying to make a run, uh, you know, deep run in the NCAA tournament, trying to make a Final Four. I think that's the thing that's going to have to be a little more consistent. But, you know, they've been able to offset that with their effort uh, on the defensive end especially and the way that they play offense. It's not like they're taking a bunch of bad threes. I thought maybe in the first half of Oregon State there was a couple that were rushed or, you know, maybe out of the flow of the offense a little bit. But that's going to happen now and then. But the way that they play on both ends of the floor has been able to cover that, you know, that, that kind of, uh, you know, negative in, in the shooting from, from three-point land. But that's going to continue to get better. I think as they continue to, you know, learn even more how to play with each other and the chemistry continues to build, they'll, they'll know where guys, you know, need to get the ball to feel the most comfortable and knock down those shots. And they were mostly taking good shots. So if you're taking good shots, you live with that. Some days they're going to go in, some days they're not. You know, they're going to have hot days and, and not have hot days. So, um, you know, if they could just continue playing with confidence and continue to play the right way, I think that'll even itself out over the course of the season. Any other final thoughts um, again for the game against Oregon before we move on and talk about tonight's game at 8 o'clock um, Mountain Time uh, against Wyoming? Yeah, no, I thought it was just a good performance on Sunday. Um, you know, just – the, there was no dip and there, that could have been a game a kind of a trap game with them preparing for Washington and then that, that getting canceled and, you know, kind of having to refocus. But I think you see it with these guys is that they, they are a strong, you know, family uh, team and that they, they were able to get through that, stay focused and, and come out and play a really solid game on the road for the first win in the Pac-12. And then this week's going to be big for them though. I think this, you know, Wyoming team is tough um, and, you know, it doesn't look that look like it from the rankings, but, you know, they went in and beat Washington, you know, in overtime at Washington. Um, you know, they've had Very some cool. solid some solid wins. They're, in, they're undefeated as well. And I know that, um, you know, the coach from Wyoming and, and Tommy have a, have a really good relationship. So I think they know, you know, the style of play that both of them play. Um, it'll be a good test for them. And then, you know, obviously, you know, the big game on Saturday that I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, at Illinois is going to be a, a huge test for them. Um, that's going to be an environment that, you know, is, is one of the toughest that they played in, probably the toughest so far this year for sure. Um, and it'll give us a good, another measuring stick game. You know, I need to see where we're at. And they've passed every test so far. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do in a true road game in a hostile environment on Saturday. But first, we got to take care of Wyoming. Yeah, tonight, uh, Arizona, uh, they're 16 and a half point favorites uh, against Wyoming here in Tucson at the McCall Center. One guy that, you know, has had a few down games after having a great uh, tournament in Las Vegas when they beat Michigan in the championship, Dalen Terry. 
who was on the program just a few weeks ago. How do you think he's been playing? And do you think he's been struggling as of late, but he does so many positive things. Do you think he can, you know, maybe get back on the scoring uh, board maybe here tonight against Wyoming? Yeah, I, I hope so because, you know, DT has been playing, you know, so well on defense. He's been affecting the game in so many other ways, except for, you know, on the offensive end. And he's kind of been on a roller coaster a little bit with consistency in his scoring. But if he can be aggressive tonight, hunt his shots a little bit more, look for his floaters in the lane, and, you know, just take the wide open opportunities when he has them from three, he'll start knocking those down. But, you know, he, one thing that hasn't, he hasn't changed is his energy. His energy is still, and we've talked about this a lot on the pod, but his energy is still infectious on the defensive end, and that's where he makes, you know, really makes his mark right now. But if they can get him to be a consistent, you know, 10-point scorer per game, a little bit above that, you know, that's going to be a huge bonus uh, for them if he's being aggressive on the offensive end. And he has the toolbox to do it. It's just putting together a string of games that are consistent with that scoring ability. Yeah, and AJ, before we get into your interview with Jack Murphy, You mentioned their game this Saturday against Illinois. It's a huge game on the road. And the big matchup that everyone's going to be wanting to see is Kofi Coburn versus Christian Coloco. Coburn right now is averaging 23 points, 12 rebounds. He is just incredible. Might be the most dominant big man in the country. But, you know, Coloco is not that far behind. How do you think this one will play out this Saturday? This is what I want to see. As a You know, it's right in my wheelhouse, man. So, you know, Coburn is, is incredibly, you know, talented. He's a physical presence. And, you know, it's just a good opportunity for Christian to go out and prove again who he is as a player and where he's at, the development that he's made. And you don't always get these opportunities. You don't see too many really star-studded big man matchups anymore. And so this is going to be a special thing for me. I'm excited to watch this game, man. I'm pumped to, to see Christian get out there and, and uh, match up with, with Coburn. Uh, and, that you know, it could be – that could be a deciding factor of the game is who who comes out on top of that matchup or whether they, you know, kind of X each other out and, and it's off the guard, the guard matchups. But, you know, it's just something exciting to see two big guys down there battling and we'll be ready for that on Saturday night. But it's going to be prime time. Yeah. College basketball, there's always a lot of small ball being played, but this year seems to be an exciting time for the rebirth of the big man. Mark Williams at Duke, Zach Eady at Purdue, um, and then, we, uh, you know, Gonzaga has Chad Holmgren and Drew Timmy, and then Arizona with uh, Jules Tabellas um, and uh, Christian Coloco, and then we mentioned Coburn. Who do you think has the best big man in the country right now, AJ? Well, I'm biased, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm going to go, you know, I, I really like Holmgren at, at uh, Gonzaga. Different player than, you know, Coloco, I think, and, you know, a lot different than Coburn. They're, they're all kind of, they all offer a little bit of different skill sets. Uh, and Edie at Purdue is a handful, man. I mean, the dude is, <laughs> he's so that big and, and very skilled for, for being that big. Great footwork, you know, light on his feet. You don't see that all the time. And he's tough, but. You know, right now we'll see this week. It's an opportunity for for Christian to kind of, you know, put put his stamp on it and, and see where he's at. And he's definitely up there. I think all those guys are the top, you know, top bigs in, in the nation. Um, I think it's early in the season to say who's the best, um, but you know, getting to have these opportunities to see them match up head to head in a prime time game is going to give us a little bit of uh, more, you know, focus on, on on who holds that top spot. Yeah, well, AJ, before we get into the interview with Jack Murphy, um, what's your prediction for these two games, Wyoming tonight and then Illinois on Saturday? What, what's your uh, – you think they could go 2-0? and I think they can. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the way that we've been playing, I, I don't think anybody can – can really beat us uh, if we're playing at a, at a high level like we have been. But I think this game is tonight is going to be a little bit uh, harder than people expect um, for, for portions of the game. Um, but I think we'll, we'll pull out the victory tonight. And then Saturday, um, that's a true road. To, I mean, it's the first really true road test that they're going to have. And so um, it, that could go either way, to be honest. Um, you know, I think that we'll rise to the occasion. Uh, we have so far every single time we've had something uh, this year. And I think, um, you know, guard play will be really big. I think, you know, Kirk Creasa plays on the road, really commanding the team and kind of, you know, settling, putting the pace in and, and settling the team down will be big for him on the road. I expect Ben to play well. And then if we can get like, uh, you know, an outstanding performance from, from Dalen um, or one of the guys off the bench, even, uh, I think that there's a good shot that we win both of these games this week, but um, they're both going to be tough challenges. So, you know, they're, they're stay focused, 
keep focusing on the things that, that they can control, like their energy effort and, and you know, uh, 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 teammates, uh, focusing on your teammates, and it will be just fine. Yeah, well, AJ, tell us who we have coming up next on the show. Yeah, I'm excited, man. This is my guy uh, for many, many years. Uh, been a, been a good friend of mine. He's been one of the staples of the Arizona program for for many years now. Uh, he's be associate head coach Jack Murphy is joining us at, at Bear Down Ballers coming up next. Tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up with Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their new Rush Pay Instant Approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, more secure, and more reliable. With basketball season tipping off, get in on the action by going to betrivers.com today or by downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. Must be 21 years or older. Gambling problem? Call telephone 1 800 Gambler. Yes, sir. I'd like to welcome into Bear Down Ballers my guy, Coach Jack Murphy, man. How's it going today? Yeah, it's going, going great, AJ. I appreciate you having me. Good, man. We've been to have you on for a while, so I'm glad you're, glad you're finally here, man. We'll go ahead and hop right in. Um, you know, first off, congrats on, you know, an extremely hot start uh, to the season this year. You know, the guys look like they're playing at a really high level. Um, looks like they're really having a lot of fun. Uh, and the team chemistry has really come along, you know, pretty quickly this year. You know, what do you think are the keys that have, you know, contributed to the start so far this year? Yeah, I, I think that we have a group of guys that love being around each other, uh, really tight and together. I mean, it reminds me of our teams back in the day, AJ, like when, when I first showed up on campus and how tight like you and JT were and how you kind of brought all those freshmen in uh, in together with Richard, Luke, Ricky Anderson, yep. everybody. And they, these guys love being around each other. They have their inside jokes. They have their things that make them laugh that uh, as coaches, we have no idea what's going on. And, and that happens off the court, uh, on the court. And uh, I think you just seen that displayed in their, in their brand of basketball. And obviously, too, you give Coach Lloyd a ton of credit for the system he's brought in and, and the style of play that he's kind of integrated into everybody. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's just injected a bunch of confidence, you know, into every single guy on the team, which which is evident, you know, so far this year. You know, I think that probably helped. Like last week, I know you guys were affected by, you know, the pandemic and, uh, and not getting to to play Washington in that game being postponed. Like, what did you guys do to keep the guys focused during that time? I know that's something we all got to deal with nowadays, but what? how did you guys get through that and stay focused, you know, before Oregon State? Well, luckily, you know, it, unlike a lot of years uh, in college basketball, we, we have some sophomores. We have guys that went through this last year, whether it was Pella last year at Utah or Justin Kyer and Kim Aiken at their schools. And, and then the group of guys that were here at Arizona, we had numerous games canceled or changed last year. So, unfortunately you kind of got used to it and so it was kind of like uh rewind the clock a little bit last week it it, it brought back some bad memories but you know because of those experiences in the past you knew kind of how to act and how to prepare for the next game and and I'd be lying if I didn't tell you we were not we but I personally I was a little nervous going into Sunday because we'd only played one game in like two weeks like you want to kind of get the rust off and uh so it was fun to get back out on the court and see the guys get up and down and I thought coach did a great job of kind of moving past Thursday, not having a game right into Sunday and the preparation never stopped and it just kept it going. Well, I know one person that, you know, wasn't affected by that at all was, uh, was Ben Matherin. I mean, yeah. had a heck of a game. I mean, probably one of his best games he's had since, since being at U of A and, you know, just talk a little bit about Ben's development. I know he started the season, you know, a little bit slower than probably he expected, but I mean, he's come on like crazy, you know, the last few games and just been a consistent force. So kind of talk about Ben and his maturity and development and, and what's gone into that. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't be – I don't know if I've been around a, a young man that I've been more proud of, like to to be – to have recruited and, and coached. And obviously I've been with Ben since day one, since he got on campus. And, you know, he had his ups and downs last year. You know, people forget early on last year he was coming off the bench. He had uh, He had some tough games early on. Even when he had some success, he, he, he then, you know, had some uh, difficult road trip to L.A., you know, where he, he really couldn't contribute that much. And, and we still had some success as a team. So his slow start wasn't completely shocking. But I, I think that what he did and what he's grown and matured on is he understood that uh, I can go out there and make plays for my teammates. I can give myself up for the team. And then everything will come back around. And I think you saw that in Vegas. He had a great game versus Wichita really made some big plays against Michigan. So I think his confidence was at a high. 
And, you know, he had, he had, you know, one of those games that just wasn't his night against Sac State, but last night he got right back on that horse and, and he didn't do anything out of, out of uh, the ordinary. I, he didn't do anything spectacular. I mean, he just, he, the ball came to him. If he was open, he drove it in and finished at the rim. And uh, if he had it on the perimeter, he was open. He took the shot. Uh, we, we want him to hunt threes. We want him to be aggressive offensively. It, it's important for our team. And I think his maturity this year has shown through. I mean, through his bad days, aren't nearly as bad. And they're, uh, they're coming less and less often than they did last year. He's a much more consistent player all the way around. Yeah, absolutely. I thought, you know, him making plays for other guys. And really, really his defense, you know, this year has been a lot better uh, in high level, uh, higher level than it was last year. So he's, he's just been fun to watch, man. He's a, he reminds me a lot, you know, of Mike D, to be honest, yeah. Mike Anderson and, and his game style. And so he's Diesel. You know, Diesel. The diesel, that's right, baby. The diesel <laughs> and built a lot the same, man. That, that's very similar. The athleticism. So, you yeah. know, another guy I wanted to talk to you about uh, that I love, you know, being a being the big man and uh, you know having seeing him hold down the paint as CeeLo and Chris Galoco, man, and you know just the the development that's come from him over the last year has been pretty incredible. Uh, and so, you know, just speak to to that a little bit about what he's done and how he's just anchored the defense this year. And, He's just been playing really well. Yeah, I mean, I I think that Christian, he's shown flashes of this last two years. I mean, in practice, I'll never forget his October of 2020 was unbelievable. Like, you went into October, uh, into November last year thinking, man, Christian could be defensive player of the year in the conference. And and I think that he's showing that now. And sometimes it, it takes guys a little bit longer time to develop, but you know how – how great it is defensively when you, you have guards on the perimeter that can pressure the ball, knowing that they have a shot blocker on the backside. Uh, some guys take charges, AJ. Uh, you do a little <laughs> bit of both. You block shots yeah. and took charges. That's and right. Some guys are like Lauren Woods. They, they're just swatting everything. So Swat everything. <laughs> I, I, I know Lauren made Gilbert and Jason look like really good on-ball defenders for a couple of years. <laughs> And, and Christian's making our guys do the same. And, uh, you know, when you're funneling stuff to the rim and, and he's there and he's not afraid to challenge guys, you know, because some guys don't want to end up on a poster. And Christian uh, Christian tries to flip it in reverse and put other people on a poster. That's right. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's doing, he's doing really well, man. It's just fun, fun to watch. And, you know, I kind of had a similar trajectory where, you know, it took me a little while to get going. And then once you see that kind of light click and the guys start playing well as a big, it's just it's fun to watch. So we'll keep uh, following his development all year. You know, we've talked a lot about uh, on the podcast, you know, about Ben, Azulis has been playing great, CeeLo. But some of the other guys that we haven't discussed so much yet, uh, you know, Kirk Creesa, who I really love, um, Justin Kyer and Pell Larson. So yep. if you could just talk about what those guys are contributing to the team right now and what you see, you know, the development for them, you know, the rest of the year and what you need from them, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I, I, I think like uh, Justin Kyer, I really thought Sunday's game was his best game of the season. I thought that he came in off the bench, gave us a huge spark. You know, this is a kid that has started every game for like the last six or seven years of his life. You know, from yeah. his sophomore year of high school, he started um, and he started at George Mason. He started he started at Georgia. It's one of those things where this is the first time he's come off the bench. He's really wrapped his arms around the role. He came here for a specific reason. And you saw a game like Sunday and it just showed all the great things about our team. You know, our starters got off to a good start then they were a little rocky at times. And, and Justin was like that kind of spearheaded that second unit and they just came on the floor and just took it to him. And uh, I thought he played under control and really gave us great minutes. Kirk Risa, I mean, he speaks for himself, his energy, his, his attitude, his swagger, um, the way that he, he doesn't mind talking smack, even though he's the littlest guy out on the court. Um, he's going to take charges. He's going to make all the plays that are winning plays. And some of them don't show up in the box score. Like he, he's got the throw ahead pass to Ben. Everybody sees this, the sports center dunk, but Ben doesn't get the ball unless Kerr sees it up the floor about 60 feet on, on one bounce. So, uh, you know, there's a reason he's one of the top guys in the country and assist to turnover percentage, just like Justin is. And then Pella Larson, I think Pella, people that forget, and AJ, you, you as a former guy, former player, you know this. He missed three months. He had surgery in August. He missed all of September, all of October, really towards the, the towards the tail end. I mean, it's so hard to get your rhythm back, especially on the offensive end. And so what Pella did is he came in right away and was a de defensive monster. Like I thought in Vegas, he really turned those games with his defense. Uh, I know everybody was a little concerned with, uh, his offense, 
we, we aren't concerned about his offense. That's going to come around, especially when you go out on the court and your focus is helping the team, doing what it takes defensively, rebounding, taking charges. I mean, the offense is going to come. He's just so talented. And I think some of these games, uh, you're seeing that more and more, him get that feel on the offensive end, and he's going to have a breakout game here coming up. And, uh, yeah, we're just fortunate not only to have those guys, but to be as deep as we are and everybody kind of understanding and accepting their roles. Yeah, you guys are extremely deep, I mean, it's good to, good to have so many weapons coming off the bench and, you know, there's no real drop off for energy or talent or, or anything, which is. The, the, there's great. no Wessel. There's no Wessel. Yeah, there's no J West, you know what I mean? <laughs> we, we love you, man. <laughs> so going back to, you know, the past a little bit, you know, you had the opportunity to work with, you know, how many pros across all the years that you've been, you know, involved with Arizona, you know, Mike Bibby, Jason Terry, you know, Luke Walton, Richard, like you talked about, Gilbert, um, you know, and which forms the best college basketball alumni group, in my opinion. You know what I mean? I'm going to fight for second, that all the time. I, you know what I'm saying? I think you would second that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, what are, what are some of the things that all those guys kind of had that you noticed and how were you able to work with them? And what did you get out of, you know, working with those guys that you can kind of translate, you know, over to the guys that, that we have now on the team? Yeah, I, I think that when you look at the Arizona pros, you're talking about a group of group of people and you're included in that AJ, like a group of people that have an unbelievable work ethic. Like they're, they're down to earth. You can talk to them and hang out with them off the court, but when they get on the court and in between those lines, whether it's to just get shots up to do a workout for practice or a game, like they're locked in and ready to go. I mean, I, I don't know if I've been around a group of guys ever. Then the, the, this goes to my time in Denver or Memphis, wherever that, have as much fun and then can get down to business and it could be a flip of a switch you know uh when Richard or Luke or, or Andre um you know Gilbert those guys got on the floor to work out like that they, they meant business they were getting that work done and and you think back to a guy that worked his tail off like Michael Wright yeah. and, and nobody worked harder than Mike Wright I mean he was in the gym at night jumping rope uh he was getting shots up two three times a uh, day you know he'd come back in at 11 o'clock at night and he got every ounce of uh, of talent out of his body out of what what god gave him and you know he made a great living for himself and his and his daughter through that through the game so you're not not just the nba guys but i think that that's what coach olson instilled in everybody you know he, he gave everybody a love of the game and that love continued on it's like a snowball when the snowball is rolling down the hill it gets bigger and bigger and bigger the more you work out, the better you get, the more you enjoy it, the more you want to do it. And I think that uh, Arizona basketball for a long time, long period of time has kind of been that snowball. And uh, and I think you're seeing that with our team now. We, we have a lot of guys that love the gym. They love getting in there extra. They love pushing each other. Uh, Shane Noel and Adama Ball, they're like twins. Like they're they're the two <laughs> freshmen. Like they're they're like you they're and JT. They're, they're, JT yeah. 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 <laughs> they're like twins. Like they're playing one on one after practice. They're pushing each other to be great, to be better. And two, three years are going to look back on these times and saying, wow, like those guys were on that team too. Yeah. And and it, it all like that work that they're putting in now, you're going to see in a couple of years. And I think that's the beautiful part. Yeah, I mean, you're doing a heck of a job with them, man. And so that leads into my final question. I know I got to let you get on the road, get on, get some more, you know, uh, high level guys coming coming in in the future. But, uh, you know, you you talked about a little bit with, with Coach O and kind of what he brought to the program. But you know, obviously you've been in the head seat, you know, coaching your own program. But you've got to coach across, you know, many generations of, of Arizona basketball with Coach O, you know, Coach Miller and now and now Coach Lloyd. Can you? Can just talk a little bit about like something that you've took, taken from each one of them that you kind of implement in your own coaching strategy. Yeah, I, I think with Coach Olson, he's the greatest practice coach I'd ever been around. You know, uh, you know how detailed he was. He could be down on one end, <laughs> AJ, right. with, with, with the guards, and turn around and AJ, AJ, yeah, drop step, <laughs> get that elbow up. I mean, he was like a Hawkeye, and, and, and so he really ran it. He he allowed his coaches to coach. Uh, Coach Roz, uh, Coach Tension, Jay John, uh, Josh, whoever it was, he allowed those guys the freedom to coach in practice, but he understood what was happening at all times. And, and his feel for the game, his feel for practice, I mean, that's why Arizona won every preseason tournament every year in November. I mean, I felt like going in every November, we were the most prepared team. We were ready to go. And, and so that was Coach Olson. And then Coach Miller coming from NAU, coming from being a head coach for seven 
speakers. I have an unbelievable and preparation and thought process that he goes in uh, in every year, every practice, every season. I think he gets a bad rap of not being, um, you know, malleable, not being able to change. Uh, th that wasn't my experience with him at all. You know, I came in as an assistant, uh, having been a head coach, he wanted to know things that we had done at NAU. And I was like, coach, you've won a lot more games than I won at <laughs> NAU. And, but he still wanted to know. He was constantly learning. Uh, uh, he, he allowed me to put in a zone defense. We ran zone last couple of years. I mean, he was willing to change with the times and see how, see how the game had changed. And, and I, I just respect the I've never anyone devour film like Coach Miller. Like he could watch a practice in five games, like in an hour and like understand everything that went through. And, and then with Coach Floyd, he just makes everything fun. Like he brings it just that that's infectious. Uh, guys love playing for him. And I come from more of like a school, like, well, if A goes here, B must do this. Like there's rules to the game. And and Coach Lloyd does such a great job of teaching game and eliminating those rules. And it's much harder to prepare for, to scout us, or to understand coaching over coaching us. So, but I, the system that Coach has brought in, the, the, the confidence he's brought in, and the confidence he's in, he instills in our players is just, it's incredible. And you can see why he's won so many games uh, where he's been and why we're going to win so many games in the future. Well, that's, a, that's a great breakdown for all three of those guys, man. And, uh, you know, you've been just an integral part of, of Arizona basketball for so many years. You've helped all of us so much. And I did see another guy behind your shoulder before I let you go that we need to give a shout out to little who you with for Coach, <laughs> Coach Rosborough back there. I think he turned 77, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, Coach yeah, Rosborough is mean, a special guy. A, a, AJ, no one's better than, than Coach Rosborough. And, and I, Coach Olson, and deservedly so, gets all the credit. But no one no one uh, uh, understands or appreciates this man more than myself, you. I mean, anyone that was here during that time. Uh, you know, he kept a lot of those teams together, AJ. I mean, oh, people yeah. don't know. And, and there's stories that will never be told. That's and right. He, he saved the day a lot of times. And, and, Many and, and times. so he, he doesn't get the credit he deserves, uh, like a lot of assistants, but uh, just couldn't be happier to have been, been by his side and still have him stop by repping his Pima women's basketball stuff all the time. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, Coach Murph, I appreciate it, man, uh, as always. I uh, appreciate the support and everything that you've you've always done for me. You guys keep keep doing what you're doing. It's fun to watch as an alumni. I'm proud, you know, to wear that A every day like I always have been. But this this team is a special team and continued success and, and, and good luck on, on the recruiting trip, my man. I appreciate AJ. Hey, you're just another one in the long line of media stars from the Wildcat family. <laughs> Sean Elliott, you know, Channing Fry, Richard Jefferson, AJ Bramlett. <laughs> <laughs> Got a long way to go to reach those guys, but it's been a fun start so far, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck. Thanks, AJ. I know, Mark. Thanks a lot, man. I'll talk to you soon. Okay.